Hi guys, welcome to this video on building a second brand. So in this video, I'm going to show you how do we build a secondary brain on top of your primary brain. Just imagine that everybody in your team is just having one brain, which is their primary brain. But you, after watching this video, are going to have two brains working for you, right? So you're going to become two times more productive than everyone else, right? But how do we implement this second brain is something that you will learn by the end of this video. But before getting started with the video, my name is Mohammed Yasser. I'm a Microsoft MVP. I do lots of videos on finance and operations. I recently launched a course on Dynamics365Lab.com. It's a master course covering finance management, supply chain management, projects on accounting, and 10 different modules of finance and operations compressed in one single course. It's definitely worth checking it out, guys. So let's now jump into the topic of secondary brain. So one common problem we all face as a functional consultant or a technical consultant or in general as a Microsoft Dynamics 365 consultant, information overload. We do read a lot. We do understand so many things about different parameters in the system. But the problem is we assume that all those knowledge is going to stay in our primary brain. But the reality is after two weeks, we completely forget whatever we learned. And that's the same problem even I have, right? So. The strategy is we cannot keep everything in our primary brain. We need to start dumping those important information into our secondary brain. And we are going to learn how do we do that using something called as a code framework so that the information always stays with you. Even the David Allen in one of his book have mentioned that the brain is meant to only generate ideas. It's not meant to hold on to the ideas for a longer time. The ideas needs to be quickly captured in your second brain. So how do we build the second brain? What is the code framework is what we are going to see in this video. So let's get into the video, guys. Hi, guys. Welcome back. The code framework, C-O-D-E, that I was talking about is from this particular book called Building a Second Brain. It's by Tiago Forte. Definitely a very popular book and worth reading if you want to know more about this code framework. So in today's video, we will see how do I implemented this book, right? So the code basically stands for, it's no rocket science. It just stands for capture, organize, distill and express, right? So as I mentioned during the intro, uh, as a consultant of ERP, we do capture lots of information, the information from our projects workshop that we conduct, the information from the requirement gathering exercise that we conduct, the information from the self-study that we do, so much of information is going on. We do capture those information even today in a physical notebook maybe. Uh, but that's not enough because the physical notebooks is scattered and it's not easy to search for any specific detail in the physical notebook. Moreover, even today we capture maybe even in the computer, but we capture it in a notepad. We put it in a folder. You capture another information in a different notepad, put it in another folder. Unless all the information that we capture are not unified, it doesn't really uh, be a second brain for us. The important aspect is to go digital, to maybe have all of the information that you have in, in, a, in a notepad, in your digital notepad. And another key information is to unify everything that you have as an information in one single place. So that is the primary uh, requirement of capturing, right? So once you have the information captured in your digital notebook and you have unified all the information in one place, the second important aspect is organizing that particular information. The information, if it is like captured, it's in a unified place, but it's very clumsy, it's very dirty, it's very, very tough for us to uh, build a second brain with such information, even though the quality of information is good, but it's poorly organized, right? So organizing skill is extremely important, according to the book uh, of Tiago Forte, right? So in order to organize that information that you have captured, you might, according to the author, need to apply something called as PARA, which is a method. The PARA stands for Project Area Resource and Archive, right? So I used this PARA method 
and I did capture the information and I did organize that information in my notepad. So let me show you how I have did, done it. Let me pull my iPad screen to my computer. So um, that is the para that I was referring to, right? So the first folder here is project. So in this particular folder, I will have all my projects related to my work in a separate subfolders. And within every single subfolder, there is a digital note. There is a notebook, digital notebook, where I use, uh, use this digital pen and use my own handwriting and capture the information. When I write the information in my own handwriting, when I try to draw the information in the form of a flow diagram, the information sticks to my head and information also is well captured in my note taking app, right? So um, uh, if I, you know, um, get into the project folder, I have divided the project folder into personal and into work. In the personal folder, I have all my personal side hustle projects. In my work folder, I have a separate subfolder created for each of the project. And right? I cannot open either of this folder because they all have my personal project related informations. So this is how I organize my projects folder, right? Um, so in the projects folder, whatever information I captured from my team's call, from my discovery workshops, from requirement gathering workshop, they are all written there. I only capture the essence of information, most relevant and most important information. I don't capture everything and make my digital note again so big. So all the useless informations are filtered and only very, very relevant, useful information are captured. One big advantage of the note taking app is I can even take a picture, I can take a snapshot of whiteboarding, uh, whiteboarding boards, I can even take a snapshot of a current system of the customer, let's say for example, all that are captured as a raw data in the system to start with, right? So that's captured and then we organize it in the relevant folder. So the next folder is the area folder, right? If I get into the area folder, I have multiple subfolders. This folder represents all my customer related uh, work. So um, this folder will have multiple notepads for each of my existing customer. This folder having multiple notepads for different types of ideas I generate for different platforms. This is for different pla different partners. I have individual notebook for each partner, each prospect individual notebook as well. Self-learning, depending on the topic, I have different notebooks for different topics inside the self-learning uh, folder. I also have like a to-do list here in the area page where I can like um, plan my day up front. For example, today is Sunday, right? So I, my to-do list for today is not too long. So if I just open my to-do list, like it's very, very bad handwriting, but still I, I like to, you know, use my own handwriting to capture the information, like create a video on the second brain that I'm doing right now. So once I'm done, I can like strike that out. And right now I'm in the process or in progress with this. Likewise, I have two, three more activities to do. Once I'm done with the activity, I will just uh, put a tick or a cross, right? So this is uh, one classic example of um, uh, capturing the to-do list as well. So this is the area section, right? So the next third section is the resources. Like the resources are the folder where um, if you find anything which doesn't fits into a projects or area, then those are the ones we gets into the resources section or the resources section are plainly the tools that are needed to execute all the projects or execute any area in the system. Very, very important piece of information that you will be using on an everyday basis. These are some of my uh, resources like um, that right now I'm using and every resource, every notepad do has. Um, very, very important, crucial information. Archive is the last folder where if a specific deadline is done, if a specific project is completed, I move the project from this folder to the archive folder, right? This is how I organize and manage my work, guys. So let's move to our uh, whiteboard back. So we have captured the information. We use a para method to organize the information. And then the next way is called D, which is distill, right? Distilling the information. Meaning we cannot capture every single information that we have, right? Like we, we capture so much of information. Now the process is, let's say, for example, you have taken a picture of a notebook and you are highlighting the key uh, essence of uh, uh, specific lines in the notebook. And now it's, it's now our um, during the distilling process we may need to summarize that particular page into one single paragraph 
or you are in a customer workshop you captured tons and tons of information into four or five pages even though they are only important information but still they are running up to four pages now finding the connection between the four pages and summarizing them into one single paragraph and then creating the pockets of information right so that is called as a distilling process cleaning the information and compressing it into one particular paragraph in a form of a maybe a brain map and like a like a flow diagram i always try to represent the information in a form of a diagram or in a form of a text in one paragraph right so that is something which you can also do you know in in the in the case of distill for example while i was reading the second brain book i did take notes for like five six pages but now i compress that particular notes into one single page i will show you how how it looks like right so this is an example of let's say today's video right so um like we have this code framework and there is this capture there is this organize and distill and express and you have also a diagram which shows all the informations are coming on top of the funnel and then it gets into the funnel and only the relevant information is captured and organized using this para method right so this is one classic example of how we distill the information and just keep it in one page and represent the information right i just need to have a glimpse of uh, that particular a uh, page that's all and i know what the page is talking about right so that is a classic example of how do we do the distilling and likewise an express express is the last step where we might need to use all the information that we have collected in your project whether it's a project related information you are capturing them now use that information in your F fdd document or in your a proposal document or uh, maybe execute that in your project in 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 today today's video is a classic example of how i captured the information organized it and i actually uh, distilled what is relevant for me to convey in today's video and then i express that particular information in today's video right this is one classic example of how, how i actioned whatever i captured organized it and i express it likewise in a project you can um go ahead and summarize the project and then finally understand the customer's pain point better and and uh, the summary of the pain points can now be translated into a proposal and then provide the customer with that particular proposal for example you know and one question i'm sure that you all might get in your uh, brain is do i really need to invest on any kind of a note taking app in order to do that uh, like it might it might be expensive in some cases some note taking app right you don't need to invest on any specific note taking app like you have apple notes in any apple platform you have likewise the default notes even in the android platform or a lot of free note taking apps are also available just use any note taking app all the note taking apps these days are very very advanced they have a very good search functionality if you are from microsoft you always have microsoft one note right so if i just open my one note for example let me switch to my microsoft one note so if you see even in the microsoft one note i have created project area resource and archive right uh, one other advantage of microsoft one note is you can also share your notes and start collaborating on your notes with your team right so it's like a uh, you can unify even the collaboration process in your notes so um again against the project let's say you're working on two projects projects one project two and you name the project here right so against the project one there is one page likewise you can create n number of pages for a project one let's say i'm in the first page of the project one i can um, like zoom the page right and uh, it's also showing me the date and time and everything of the notes getting captured so uh, let's say i'm using a shape and then i got to understand the problems of the customer and i say that um, customer um, pain right and then i now put each of the pain points into different points right and from there you can like create two subcategories as well and then you can also like um, take a picture and uh, maybe put some snapshots here against each of the pain points you can like compress it you can expand it get into a problem write more notes about it so it's also a pretty pretty good note taking app which is uh, your uh, one notes which you can use which i'm sure you all have access to it right so 
please do use either OneNote or whatever platform that you would like to use but ultimately try to implement this capture organize distill and make sure you express it um, to give you an example you can maybe tomorrow enroll into a course or let's say for example you're enrolling into my dynamics 365 lab.com's master course you can actually implement this framework while you learn my courses as well capture all the information that you are gathering and then organize them and then try to implement that knowledge in different projects that you will be working on in the future, right? So that's a good idea. Hopefully you try to implement this framework in my course or in any other course that you are going to enroll. Uh, do, do that and then uh, let me know the results and let me know if you really uh, improved your productivity or not as a comment of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you in another video.